there we have it our nice little flag now we only need to name the flag and put a plaque text in hello guys and welcome back to episode 7 of Kerbal Space Program today we're gonna land on the moon with this little vehicle our manned moon lander Again, the boosters at the bottom are reusable, so they've got parachutes on them, so I can uh, drop them at the uh, once they run out, and they fly safely down to the bottom. We get refunded, and basically can use them again. I'm sorry in advance for the few graphics glitches because my recording program was somewhat glitchy here, as you can see. I tried to salvage as, as much of the footage as I could and re-recorded some of it so it's not perfectly consistent but the flight did happen like this. So there we ditched our outer fuel tanks and because we had few lines to the middle the middle tanks are still completely f full Sorry, and we've also got radio shoots on this middle one so once we ditch this it will also fly down safely. After this boost stage we have one transfer stage and deceleration stage at the moon and one landing stage and the landing stage should also get us back to Kerbin. The ascent to a nice little orbit was pretty basic here as you can see we tried to hit an orbit of roughly uh, 70 by 70 kilometers to not uh, overuse any fuel while at Kerbin. So there we have it, the apparatus is at 70 kilometers and there I cut out the booster and tried to circularize my orbit to get my periaps up again. This ship has basically all the science containers we can equip on it. We've got the material bay, mystery goo, atmospheric pressure scan and thermometer. And I also upgraded my buildings so Chibarai could go on EVA take and uh, make an EVA report and plant a flag on the moon. Because we've got a few contracts for that. And there we are in orbit. Now we just need to get the get the node going to get ourselves to the moon. So we select the moon as a target, then put a maneuver node here and extend it prograde until we get to the moon. And there we go, we have an intercept with the moon. Now with the precise node mode I can get this intercept as close uh, so as close to the moon as possible, get the periaps down enough. As you can see I tweaked it a little bit so my periaps here was at 7, that's a little bit too low. So I tweaked a little bit more and periaps was at 19 kilometers. This would be good. It's never gonna go quite that way because the burn will take some time but at least it's as good as possible. And there we are burning this maneuver. This maneuver takes a little bit over 700 meters per delta V. So we will have very little that we left in our transfer stage, but we should be okay at the moon if we don't use much fuel to land. So we need to be very careful while landing to not use too much fuel and get ourselves down. This mission includes only one Kerbal getting to the moon instead of the three person moon landings that were done in real life. Well, basically in real life it was only two persons ever always landing on the moon with a lunar lander and the third one was orbiting while that happened. Okay, now we need to intercept the moon. There we go. We're at the moon with a nice little orbit and there you have it at the moon. We're very near and now once we reach periaps we just need to circularize our orbit. Here my program didn't permit, uh, crashed all the footage. So this is uh, this is footage I re-recorded for this, but it was basically the same way. I got myself into circular orbit, 
then waited until I was in the right spot so my peri apps could be all at the daytime and burned till my peri apps was about three or four kilometers here as you can see so it intersects with the moon on the daytime side and then once I'm at about 10 kilometer height I can start very carefully burning retrograde to get the surface horizontal speed down while keeping the vertical speed somewhere between 40 and 50 or 60 meters per second so I can get down fast to the moon and there we have it I burn the rest of the fuel of my transfer stage and once this is done we cut it and start burning our lander stage so we basically try to keep the vertical speed between 40 and 50 kilometers and cut out all our surface speed by trying to push this progrid vector to the top of the nav ball. There we go. We're below one meter of horizontal speed. So that's good. Now we only need to worry about our vertical speed. So I waited until my altitude was low and there you have it. Altitude is at 200 and 100 meter and now I burned very very carefully to get myself down to the moon. I'm gonna show this in real time the landing and there you see I tried to keep myself below 3 meters per second or even 2 meters per second. Tried to keep my horizontal speed in the millimeters region and tried to keep my vertical speed as low as possible for touchdown. And there we go we've touched down on the moon. This is Chebediah from Herman's first time on an alien planet. Now let's get him out and let's see what he has to say about the moon. That was one big leap for a Kerbal down this rocket and it worked. He can now basically get a little bit away from the rocket and plant his flag into the moon to show it is him that was here first, Chebediah Kerman. There we go, he's unpacking his the flag and there we have it, our nice little flag. Now we only need to name the flag and put a plaque text in. The site is of course the first moon landing and the plaque text is in honor of Cheb. Cheb was here on the 3rd of April 2016. There we go, our plaque text is done. We did all the science that we can do here and now he can use his chat pack to get back into the capsule and we can leave the moon again. And to get back to Kerbin we go straight up and straight into a 90 degree, uh, into a 90 degree angle to get into a very low orbit of the moon to not wa waste any delta V. We're gonna try to hit for an apparatus of around 20 kilometers and then wait, coast to apparatus and circularize our orbit and wait for the right time to boost back to Kerbin. There we have it, it's got 28 kilometers and we circularize our orbit a little bit. And once we're here at the exact line of the orbit of the moon, we're gonna burn prograde to get away from the influence of the moon and back to Kerbin. As you can see, this way our periapse is going down and we won't be need to adjust our, our orbit once we exit the influence of the moon. We can get down to a periapse of 40 kilometers here already and don't have to worry about it. And there we are plummeting towards Kerbin and I decided here to use the rest of my delta V to slow myself down and to see if I was able to get the whole spacecraft down to the to the ground and not just my capsule which would be able to detach. So I decided to burn all of my fuel and then hope for the best, hope that no part of the rocket would explode and get through the atmosphere here. As you can see it was very very hot, very fiery and it was a very very long descent. I think the descent itself took about 10 to 12 minutes or something. I'm gonna show you this all in 4 times time acceleration so you 
don't need to sit through all of this. I felt pretty good about this reentry because my vertical speed was dropping steadily so I was basically not going down too fast to get into the denser parts of the atmosphere so it would burn up but I was slowing down considerably enough so I wouldn't uh, skip back out of the atmosphere again. It just takes a, wh a while to get down like this but if you don't have a heat shield on your rocket like uh, like with this one where I don't have a heat shield on the bottom just my engines it works pretty well to get the whole ship down here the only thing you can see are here a few heat bars for my landing legs because they are very exposed but I could have also landed the ship without the landing legs so I didn't worry about this too much luckily for me the landing legs still survived so I was able to salvage them in the end and there you have it, my vertical speed now again is rising, but my surface horizontal speed is well below 1700 meters now. It's at 1.5 kilometers now, so that's not really dangerous anymore at this height of 24 kilometers. So I was pretty much in the safe now and could relax, sit back and watch my ship get down to the bottom here or to the ground and there we have it we're safe now even the flames are dying down Jeb is smiling he basically was smiling all the way through it and we even skipped over this town that you can see in the background again sorry for the graphics glitch I don't know what happened to my recording here but it works and our parachute is deploying here and tries to get us down to the atmosphere uh, to the ground I deployed my landing legs here just waited to get down to the ground and there we have it touchdown and I was able to recover a lot of science and a lot of funds here because my boosters were also recovered so this rocket was really really cheap because it only cost about 12 or 13 thousand and we got 5 thousand here and here we completed some contracts. We got science data from around the moon, science data from the surface of the moon, then we planted our flag on the moon. We've got some fir world first milestones here for the moon and we orbited the moon. So basically we got a lot of money out of this contract. There we cover our little landing stages and now we can get to spend the science. Okay, so what do I want to spend it on? Storage technology, I don't need them for now. Miniaturization would be only good for probes. Maybe later. Command modules, there's nothing there. And there we have it, landing legs. Don't need them, the ones I had really worked well. Advanced construction. We've got a little bit of construction material here. We've got the OKS hub, so we can start building some space stations with this. Logistics rover parts. This looks pretty nice for only 90 science, so I think we'll research this. And let's see what else. Propulsion systems for probes, the small stuff. Also, okay, let's research this and research the heavy rocket design. There we go, and we get to use all this stuff in the next episode. I hope I see you guys then. Thanks for watching this episode of Kerbal Space Program. If you liked it, be sure to leave a comment or click that like button. And if you never want to miss an episode again, be sure to subscribe. And I want to give a special thanks to DJ Jackson for making this awesome background music for this episode. You can find uh, the link to his site down below. I hope I see you guys next time.